Hi, welcome back to Taronga TV. I'm with Susie. She's a keeper here at the Taronga Institute of Science and Learning. Suze, talk us through these beautiful creatures. Yeah, so Hayden, we're in one of our immersive classrooms. This is our rainforest room. We have three habitats. So we have woodlands, arid, and then the rainforest. Well, it really feels like it right now, that's for sure, uh, yeah. right here. These beautiful creatures, obviously not Australian, but can you talk us through what, who they are? Yeah, so we have four cotton top tamarins here in this exhibit, and they're a little bachelor group, so they're all boys, and they're from South America, so specifically from the northwest corner of Colombia. They are so beautiful. Why is this a bachelor group? Yeah, so these guys are brothers. They're four brothers. We've okay. got uh, twins, so I'll introduce you. We've got um, we've got Petey and JD, who's just up the back there, yeah. and Juan and Tricky. And Tricky here, he's the, the dominant male. Yeah. And they live really cohesively as, a, as an all-male group, and they will often do this in the wild when they're sort of in between, um, you know, moving through different family yeah. groups. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear everyone. I'll try and get a little bit closer with my microphone and see if we hear a couple of little vocalisations, Suze. They're eating at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, all I can hear is chewing. <laughs> all I can hear is chewing as well. You hear that? It sounds like a little bird says, doesn't it? Incredible. Yeah, so they have a very complicated language. They actually have 38 different vocalisations. They have their own grammar. So by varying the, the pitch and the length of those um, high-pitched trills or, or calls, they can have very, very complex conversations with each other. Like grammar, proper grammar. Proper grammar, yeah. I could probably do with a little bit of uh, <laughs> tamarind teaching from, from them. They are just incredible. And what do they eat in the wild? Yeah, so they eat a whole range in the wild, lots of different uh, fruits, they eat invertebrates, different insects, just like these mealworms. They also eat seeds, and they can eat quite large seeds, um, and they act as seed dispersers in the wild. So they, you know, they help the ecosystem by, by fertilising the ground um, and by dispersing those seeds as well. So you might have heard that in school, kids, if you're watching, seed dispersers, there's lots of different ways, isn't there, Suze? Animals do it, wind does it, water does it, loads of different ways, and these are a seed disperser. That's very cool. Now, talk us through their beautiful markings and their, uh, their tail and everything. Yeah, so they're a very unique little monkey. They sort of look like a little punk rocker, yeah. I think. Um, people often liken them to little Albert Einsteins. They're very cute. Um, but yeah, you'll see they have that beautiful long tail. These guys are a New World monkey from yeah. South America. Um, and their, their tail isn't prehensile, so it means they can't grab like a spider monkey, for okay. example, but they use it for balance. So yep. you'll see as they move along the branch, they'll move it from side to side to make sure that they can maintain their balance on, on the vines and on the branches. They are absolutely spectacular. And everybody watching, if you want to come and try out one of the immersive classrooms, talk to your teachers and see if they can book a room because that's what you do, don't you, Suze? You go on, when schools come back, you can come back in here and have this incredible experience where you've got these beautiful creatures all around you. Now, there's some birds in here as well, Suze. Nicobar pigeons, correct? Yes. What correct. else have we got? Yes, we have the Nicobar pigeons. We also have bleeding heart pigeons and they're more a ground-dwelling bird. And we have two tortoises that live in here as well. Beautiful. He was really talking then. <laughs> Can you hear that, everyone? So we've got another breeding group down in that beautiful fig tree opposite the meerkats. Can you talk us through what's going on there? Yeah, so we have a, a family group down there. There's actually seven that live on that beautiful fig tree. We have obviously the mum and dad, so yep. they're the breeding pair. And then we have all of their offspring. And we literally just had uh, a new set of twins born uh, back in March. Uh, they are called Santiago and Mateo. Fantastic. How big would they be, just to show people like oh, a... Teeny tiny. Their body is probably about that, that big when they're born, and then they have their, their tail. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're just gorgeous when they're born. They're so beautiful. <laughs> they are just fantastic. So what's the status in the wild, Suze? They are critically endangered, so their numbers are quite low. Unfortunately, uh, in the 70s, they were poached for medical research and their numbers haven't quite recovered. Mm. And that's because they've only got about 5% left of their habitat. Uh, the forests in, or the rainforests in northwest Colombia mm. um, have obviously been cleared for, for agriculture and farming and urbanisation. And so they haven't got the habitat to build those numbers back up. Mm. Thanks so much, Suze, for having us. It's really fantastic to be here. You never know what's around the next corner on Taronga TV.